Unmanned aerial vehicles, particularly those serving in India, play a crucial role as force multipliers. India's armed forces have incorporated UAVs into their operations for over 18 years, with a majority sourced from Israel primarily for surveillance purposes. However, recent conflicts underscore the significance of UCAVs, prompting India to enhance its armed drone capabilities. They are on the verge of finalizing an agreement with the United States to acquire the Predator unmanned combat aerial vehicles. Even in India, Companies like Adani Group are working on making their own UCAVs. The Big Shot DRDO tested their Rustam drone quite a few times, some hiccups, but mostly it's been a smooth ride. There's also another UCAV called Archer NG, a next-gen mail drone for medium altitude. Now these drones are only as good as the missiles they roll with, and that's where DRDO's next-gen missile steps in. But before we get nerdy with missile tech, let's talk about why India needs a dedicated missile for its UCAVs. Picture this. Every time India runs out of UCAV missiles, they can't just hit up another country for a refill. Homegrown systems have the advantages of being cost-effective, and you can get it when you need it. However, with drones acquired from other countries, there's a twist. Integrating new missiles with drones from other countries, such as the Predator drones, might require some software adjustments. This process could involve modifying the drone software to ensure effective communication with the new missile and precise control over its launch and guidance. And the US might not be cool with India customizing their Predators. This is why India requires indigenous weaponry to equip its domestically developed armed drones. DRDO's ULPGM has an effective range of between 2 to 6 kilometers, which is the standard range for this type of missile. This precision-guided munition is planned to have four different versions in its category, and will come with infrared seekers and kinetic capabilities. While only one version has been publicly disclosed, there are reports suggesting that the V2 and V3 versions are in the works. V3 is expected to be a significant improvement over V2, featuring enhanced transceiver systems that can communicate up to 10 kilometers and a better range similar to the U.S. Hellfire missile. Now, let's talk warheads. First up, there's the anti-personnel warhead. The warhead is designed to break into numerous fragments upon detonation, creating a lethal and wide-reaching pattern to maximize the chances of hitting and injuring individuals in the vicinity. Then, there's the Roof Buster Warhead. Roof Buster Warhead or Explosively Formed Penetrators are metal liners within the warhead that deform explosively upon detonation, transforming into high-speed projectiles with a concentrated impact point. They are not only designed to penetrate roofs but also walls or other barriers. Since the ULPGM is a precision-guided missile, it's a great fit for anti-terror operation. Lastly, there's the anti-tank warhead designed for top attack mode. The warhead is designed to approach the target from above, exploiting the generally thinner armor on the top of the tank. This allows for increased chances of penetrating the vehicle and reaching critical components. The ULPGM will offer drones a cost-effective means to engage targets from a distance, particularly beneficial for counterterrorism missions. Adani Defense is gearing up to produce the ULPGM V3 after army clearance. And DRDO deserves a high five. They pulled off the whole project in just 11 months. Impressive, right?